Okay, so we're on to question three now, the last one in this section. So we've got this air track and we're bouncing a car backwards and forwards like this. Um, this is another question about taking readings and being careful about doing so. So <clears throat> let's uh, assume you've read all the blurb and we'll move on to this. Right, the first thing we're asked to do is to find the n equals naught position. Well, if this is bouncing backwards and forwards and the n equals 1 is after one bounce, n equals naught must be where you released it from. So that's the first thing. So essentially what we're going to be doing is reading this value here. Now from the previous example, the previous picture here, we need to take that that is 190. So that's 190 centimetres. So it's 198, and it's where the very back of the car, we're measuring each time to the very back of the car, there and there, so it's the very back of the car, so it's 198.4. So 198.4, should really do that in pen, never mind, uh, goes in that box there. As it travels to the lower end of the track, in position P, the glider moves through a distance X. So the difference between there and there is the distance x. So in each case, we need to take away this result. This is essentially a zero error. This value here is not our reading because the zero is actually at 23.8, I think, 23.8 centimeters is the, is the zero point. So we need to take that off every single one of these readings. So we do 198.4, take away 23.8, gives us 174.6. And then we keep doing that for every single one. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to have a look at this question here. We're going to need to work out ln of x, so while it's on my calculator, I might as well work out its logarithm at the same time. So here we go. Take away 23.8 is 133.2 ln of that. Going to be 4.89. Um, I guess I could do this to one extra sig fig, couldn't I? So one. Right, one two five point four. Take away twenty eight point three. Nope, that's wrong. Take away. 23.8 L is 101.6 ln of that is 4.621 101.3 take away 23.8 is 77.5 ln of that is 4.350, 75.4, take away 28, keep doing that, don't I? 51 .6. ln of that is 3.94, that rounds to a 4, and we've got 53.8, take away 20, it's 30.0. Make sure you put the zero in there, just because it co it'll come out as 30 on your calculator. Don't forget to put the point zero in there. So ln 30 is 3.401. Okay, right. So now we have to plot these on this. And they've told us what n is, so we still need to do ln 
of x in centimetres to go along this axis here. Make sure you label your axis, please. Um, record your values in table 2 and plot the graph. So we need to make it so that we've got some nice values here. So what's the lowest one? The lowest one is 3.4. So we'll go 3.40, we can't plot it to um, three decimal places. So you can choose any scale here, but you need to make sure the whole thing fills a decent portion of the graph paper, so don't make it so the whole thing's that big. You need to make it so it's at least eight squares, so that's um, eight centimetres, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, well, eight centimetres, sorry, it's that big. So you want it, to, you want it, if it, if it fills half the graph paper or less, you should double the scale, is the general rule. So I make it so that it's really close to the bottom there. Um, and then you want to go up in nice numbers to make your life easy. Unlike the previous graph where they chose horrible numbers, if we do going up in point twos, then that makes it dead easy. Oops, that's 4.0. 0, 4.2, 0, 4.4, 0, 4.6, 0, 4.8, 0, 5.0, 0, 5.2, 0, and that's enough to fit the highest reading on there. So that's there is 10, uh, 5.10, so 5.10. So there is our first point, this one here. Uh, this one is 4.89, and it's at 2, so 4.89, so that's 4.8, that's 4.9, so 4.89 is half a box below that. Then we've got 4.62, so there's 4.6, there's 4.62, one box above it. Next one is 4.35. 4.3 is there, 4.4 is there, so it's halfway between the two. Right now, just be careful, they really mean here, that's a 9 there, not an 8. So we need to plot our next point on this line, 3.94. So there's 3.8, there's 3.9, 3.94 is there. And then this one, 3.4, well I did that on there, anyway. Then we need about the best fit line, and they should, from my practice run anyway, form a perfect straight line, which they do. <coughs> Pretty much draw the straight line through every single point. So that is our graph. Explain why the graph confirms that x decreases exponentially with n. That's because it is a straight line with negative gradient. Okay, question 3.5. Determine using your graph the value for when n is equal to 20. So naturally they haven't allowed you here to keep going. That would be too nice of them. So what they've done is they've made it so you have to work this out mathematically. So in this question for three marks, there's absolutely loads that you need to do. But none of it's too bad. It's not using anything different to what we've already used before. So first of all, we need to determine the gradient. So let's do that first. We're going to need the gradient equal to delta y over delta x. So delta y, we're going to read off this value here, is 3.40. Take away this value here, which was 5.16, divided by the dis difference between there and there. So that's 13 minus 0. And that gives us 3.4, take away 5.16, divided by 13, 
gives us minus 0.13538 and the units of that are no units because that's got no units and that's got no units right um, you could also say the units of that are log centimeters as well but um, that's what they tend to do in AQA but technically it's got no units Okay, then we need to do a little bit of mathematic jiggery-pokery. So we've got y equals mx plus c. Let's think about what graph we're drawing here. We're drawing ln of x versus n. And we So we're plotting, on the y-axis we're plotting ln of x, and on the x-axis we're plotting n. So we've got the gradient there. Now what we need to do is we need to put in a value here. We've got the value when n equals 20. So we want the y-intercept. Well, the good news is we can read that off the graph. It's there. So that is 5.16 off the graph. So the equation for this line is ln of x is equal to m, which was this, minus 0 0.13538 times by n plus this 5.16. Okay, so now we substitute in n equals 20 into that. And we get ln of x is equal to minus 0 0.13538 times by 20 plus 5.16. So we go, that was our gradient, times it by 20 plus 5.16 gives us ln of x equal to 2.4523 so x is equal to e to the power 2.4523 which is equal to 11.615 so 11.6 centimeters to 3sf nearly there Question 3.6. Describe and explain two procedures the students should take to reduce the uncertainty in the measurement of P. So if you remember there, this trolley is bouncing backwards and forwards like this, and you're trying to find out where it gets to the top. So the first one, I would suggest um, that there are more than two, but the first one I would suggest would be to get uh, eye level with the trolley and the ruler to reduce parallax error. So, so the first one is parallax. So get eye level with the end of the trolley and the scale to reduce parallax error. Okay, so parallax error is when two things don't line up because of your viewing angle. Um, <clears throat> so only if you're completely eye level with them do you get that. The second one I thought it would be difficult for you to figure out exactly when it got to the top. So I thought if you mounted um, a camera up here and took a video of it, you could play it back frame by frame. So use a slow motion camera to record the readings then you can play back frame by frame to get a better reading 
of x plus uncertainty okay because you know where the where the peak is there are other things that you could say there All right that's the first section of paper three done